Hi there, I'm Joey. I'm Jacob. And we are watching Star Trek for the first time. Last time on Star Trek, I Mud, he, uh, he came back. And, uh, and it was, you know, uh... You know what? I didn't hate it. Yeah, it was <laughs> better than his last appearance. Most definitely. Um, today we're watching an episode called Metamorphosis. Ah, I like that title. I don't know. It I doesn't don't... really tell me anything about the plot, obviously. No. I'm sure it's metaphorical, but part of me wants, like, just one of the crew members to start, like, changing into something random, some kind of creature or whatever. Right. <laughs> no, be... no, knowing this show, it could literally go either way. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I guess we'll find out. Uh, we're gonna get into post-episode thoughts in a second. Be sure to join us then. We're about to watch Metamorphosis. I have problems. Yeah, I have I have problems. I I you know, I mm, it's good sort of up until a point, right? <clears throat> because okay, I think I know exactly what we'll look before you say what I think you're gonna say. I'm, I think I'm, unless you're wrong, I think I'm 100 percent with you because I think I know where you're what you mean specifically. Yeah, um, you know, I was really on board with a lot of this episode to be honest. I, th I thought it was a really cool idea. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the Galileo shuttles was out to, to get this this woman named uh, Hedford. She's this commissioner. She's negotiating these like peace conferences, whatever. And she came down with this <clears throat> super rare disease. Like she wasn't even yeah. immunized for it because it was what what did McCoy say? A billion and one chance. Yeah. And so uh, and so they take her. They're gonna take her to the Enterprise. They're gonna fix her up there, I guess. And uh, and instead they uh, they run into this light storm thing. Uh, and they get dragged down to this planet, and, uh, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's where things happen. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, so here, first of all, really nice set. Really great set. Yeah, it's a, it's a well-built physical set. Star Trek usually nails alien planets. It's really nice to see. Um, so we're down here. We meet, uh, uh Zephyr and Cochran. Um, who is apparently famous, uh, and he's been stranded on this planet for 150 years. Um, Kirk and Spock and McCoy, they all know him because he did these, I, I forget exactly what he did, to be honest. <laughs> he founded, he, he founded, like, this big sector of space, if I, if I followed what they said. He's, he's like the Einstein of space, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, so, so he's been, he's been trapped here for this long. He's been with this, uh, this light creature thing called the Companion. Or that's what he and, calls it anyway. And the Companion has a couple issues with a little thing called consent. <laughs> oh, 100%. Some big issues here, I think. And they're um, not really relevant until, <clears throat> well, until they make the communicator do thought recognition. Yeah? yeah. Well... No, no, it's just before then. Yeah. So... So, we meet Cochran. The, the, the important thing here, we meet Cochran, and Cochran is, has been stranded here for 150 years. He has no nobody else here, and we learn eventually that the Companion uh, uh, the, is the thing that stopped Kirk, Spock, and McCoy, and, and Hedford, and brought them all down to this planet. Um, so that so that uh, Cochran could have friends, pretty much, and he, he wouldn't be lonely there. Um, right. Because he essentially made the <clears throat> the super non-real threat of I will die if I'm not, you know, have people. Yeah, yeah. Which is funny because the companion understands that, even though the companion could easily just keep him around forever. Right. The companion. But the companion doesn't understand later on when Kirk brings up the matter of Cochrane's soul dying. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. Essentially, like his spirit of. When, like that's exactly what Cochrane is referring to when he first apparently says to the companion, he's like, oh, I will die here if you keep doing things like this. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's weird. Yeah, it, it, it's like, it understands metaphor once, never again. Mm -hmm. The companion is also fucking deadly. Oh um, my god. <laughs> there's actually a pretty funny scene where it attacks Spock and afterwards McCoy goes to like check up on him. Yeah. And, and Spock is like kind of like exhilarated by what happened. He, he's like, it's, it's a primitive form of, 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 of an electric shock. It, uh, it, it, it gave me like a considerable voltage. Yeah, a considerable <laughs> voltage. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. It was a really funny moment. Um, but uh, but yeah, the companion. Uh, so so Kirk quickly realizes that oh, well, the companion thing is, is is the thing keeping us here. So what we have to do is murder it. Um, Essentially. So uh, so Kirk comes up with this plan. You uh, him and Spock make this little device that they're going to attack the companion with. So to short circuit it is what they said. Yeah, and so uh, so Cochran. Uh, 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 contacts the companion and uh, and and first off, 
they talk about this like sort of like nonverbal communication, which I which I initially thought I was like, okay, nonverbal communication, so he speaks and the companion doesn't speak as well, but it's nonverbal, so you know, right. So for, you can at least understand what he's saying. Right. But no, what happens is he literally just stands there as the companion envelops him in light, I guess. Yeah. And um, anyway, so but yeah, so um, so Kirk like Kirk and Spock like attack it. With this, the device they made. And it turns red. It turns red, it goes and attacks them, and Cochrane stops it from attacking them. And, uh, anyway, we very quickly realize that Cochrane and the Companion are in love. At least that's how they initially perceive it. Yeah. What is really happening is the Companion is in love with Cochrane. Which Cochrane is... is unaware of the light sex that he's had. Right. Which... He doesn't, which, which is not brought up until they have like this universal communicator that mm -hmm. after they talk to the companion and it has a female voice, Cochrane's like, so why'd you give it a female voice? And Kirk's like, oh, it's, it's just, it's just female. That's all it is. Um, and he has like this very reasonable reaction. Well, kind re of. Reasonable to the degree that he's not okay with, um, with, with, like, not being aware that he's been in a relationship, pretty much. Yeah, right. Um, but afterwards, he's like, oh, maybe I'm just old-fashioned. Maybe I'm not used to your fucking newfangled ways, you motherfuckers. I'm fucking 50 or whatever. I don't know. Like, like it's just, it's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Um, like, at first, I'm a little with him. But yeah. then he goes on this tirade that takes a complete left turn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. All right. So maybe we're commenting that, like, Cochrane's maybe, like, not the best guy. Maybe he doesn't actually have the best intentions here. But no. That's not at all where this episode's going. I don't think any of us were, were prepared for where this episode was going. Right. Because eventually, we get the idea across to the companion that, um, that Cochrane is not in love with her as well. Um, so the companion's like, oh, well, so you're saying you don't like me because I'm not human? He's like, no, 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 you're, you're just, you're fucking raping me. What are you doing? And, and, and the companion's like, okay, well, I'm going to fix the problem of me not being human. We actually that, this, that, that's the problem. <laughs> yes. We had this really great scene actually before where um where Hedford, the, the commissioner that they brought with them, um, she's been slowly dying this whole time. And um and her like her last actual scene, like as Hedford, I guess, is uh is, is this great scene where um where she sort of like like criticizes Cochrane after he, he storms out and she's like I you know, she's like I'm good at my job but I I have I've I've never truly loved somebody and while while he's running away from love and I just I, I really like that scene I thought that was great mm -hmm. and then the next thing we see of her is when the companion just just, just takes her takes her possesses her but then claims that they are they they are they're the same being we are we are one. They are, they became one. Like, they're both in there, is how it's portrayed, I think. Yeah. And so, again, the commander has a little problem with this thing called consent. Because <laughs> she just she just took Hedford. Right. No asking. Took Hedford. Well, and, I mean, that's because the companion solved the human problem. And at first, Cochrane is scared of this. As he should be. As he should be. Until he just, I don't know, sees how pretty she is. And Stockholm Syndrome's himself. Until, like, staying on the planet with the companion slash Hedford for, and until they both die, because now the companion can die, obviously. Um, and it's just, it is baffling. I, li I like your inclusion of obviously, like, like, I, like, it should be unsaid that once the companion takes on human form, they'll die as well. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess. I, I, I would, I would assume that, I don't know. Um, but, like, it, it's almost the same problem that I have with all these other episodes that, that have these weird, like, like, comments on beauty standards in yeah, general. Yeah, like, you like, called it out, so it's like... I, I was like, why? Like, 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 what, the second that she is a young, attractive woman... Suddenly, all the qualms that you had with the companion sexually assaulting you, just, that, that's just gone. That, yeah. that does not matter anymore. Yeah. Complete non-issue. She became human. Baffling. Absolutely baffling. And it ends on this horrifying line that Kirk says. Because again, th nobody nobody comments on the fact that Hedford is just, just gone now. Like, pretty much forever. Yeah. Hedford the person, finito, gone. So it ends on this horrifying line 
where they're walking away and, and they're like, oh, what about the commissioners? Who else is going to, to do these like peace conferences now? And Kirk is like, I quoted it here, I'm sure they can find another woman somewhere. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we're not even commenting on the fact that they have to come up with a plausible story as to what happened. Mm hmm Cause, uh, um, uh, uh, thing, uh, Cochran? Cochran. Cochran says, don't tell them about me. Yeah. Meaning they have to explain what happened to Hedford. <laughs> yeah. Why they were stranded on the planet. Why the Galileo shuttle suddenly started working. How they got back there. They have to explain all this shit. And that Hedford just died in the process. Cause what, they took a quick pit, pit stop to this fucking planet? Like... Right, like there's a lot of questions that will never get answers baffling. because of the way the episode ends. Utterly baffling. Um, okay, that was Metamorphosis. What the fuck? I wasn't expecting any of that. Um, I did also put my notes here. I like, I like the music a lot. Oh, wow, music was good. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but no, I uh, just I uh, fuck. Moving on. Uh, hopefully next week we got a, we got a better one. Uh, be sure to join hopefully. us next week when we continue Star Trek the original series. Until then, this has been Joey Morgan. I'm Jacob. Goodbye. <laughs>